Okay, I finished setting everything up. We're now ready to start this thing up and get it on camera. So here we go, logging into Windows 8. And from what I saw getting the rest of this set up, I'm glad I made that disk image, because I think when this is all over, I'm just gonna wipe everything, just blow everything away, and then reinstall Windows, 8, uh, Windows, <laughs> Windows XP from that disk image, because, yikes. They've got a lot of work to do on this thing. You know, first of all, yeah, the fish, I guess, is some kind of logo that they're using for the time being. So you start the thing up, right? One of the first problems, and this is ter this is a terrible idea, is that they actually use your email address as your username. So all these people making YouTube videos, uh, all these people like, here, look at me using my computer, it's gonna be flashing their email address on the screen all the time, and hey, look, let's spam that guy. You know, it's like how, you know, movies use 555 and stuff whenever they talk about phone numbers, that kind of thing, you know? You know, in this day and age where everybody's a nervous wreck about which which social media site is going to spill the beans on their private personal details on the internet, you know, using email addresses as usernames is a very, very, very bad idea. And if Windows 8 isn't going to stop flashing this crap in my face, I'm going to make up a I'm going to make up a uh, I'm going to open up a separate email account just for this trial because that's a very, very bad idea. Now this, I guess, is, is what you'd call the start, is, I guess this is the uh, logon screen nowadays, and uh, it's got the date and the time and a nice little picture, but here's one of the problems that I'm seeing already right off the bat. One of the reasons why Apple rocked the world with the Macintosh in 1984 was because of a very simple idea. The idea that people shouldn't have to learn how to use computers to use computers. This, I can imagine, probably just totally goes against that entire idea. Because here I am, with all my computer background and everything, having to learn how to use the computer all over again. <laughs> So it's like I'm back to square one here. Not a good thing. And uh, this happened with Office 2007 and the ribbon. It's happened with other major attempts that Microsoft has made to change how things work. This is just, oh, you know, you can't make people start over from square one. Some people don't like computers. Some people are not passionate about computers. Some people only want to learn just enough computers to be able to email, do internet, and uh, you know, do their job at work. They don't want to be constantly having to learn stuff over and over again. And that is clearly what Microsoft is missing here. So how do, let me see if I can figure out how to log on. Oh, okay, so I, finally I moved the mouse over the edge of the screen. I'm sure, of course, this was a touch screen you could um, you know, just tap the screen or something. So I got Multimedia J here, and this is because I set up a local account. The only reason that you're seeing this is because I set the local account up. Otherwise, this would be flashing an email address. And of course, since I picked blue, I get to sign in on a blue screen. <laughs> Again, with the blue screen jokes. You type your password in. Click, welcome, you've got mail. Well, it just says welcome. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it would say you've got mail. Okay, so I start up and what is this? <laughs> I guess it's better than um, I guess it's better than just having a start button in the corner and an add a little arrow going over saying click here to begin. So what do we have? Okay, this is the start screen. I've heard about this. Looks like something you'd see on a handheld device, and that's probably the intent. So when people go from handhelds to PCs and back, then it's not much of an interface change. So store, maps, people, Xbox Live. Uh, Internet Explorer, Calendar, Photos, Reader, Camera, Mail, Messaging, SkyDrive, Remote Desktop, Weather, uh, Desktop, Finance, Music, Video, Pinball FX2, Solitaire, yay! Solitaire made it into the new version of Windows. Windows Explorer. Okay, here's one thing that I already, here's one thing that's gonna give a lot of old time PC users flashbacks. What does this window remind you of? Go way, way back. You open up Windows, and the first thing you get is a big Windows screen in front of you. I'm wondering if anybody is trying to make people have flashbacks to the program manager in Windows 3.1 with this whole ordeal. Now, let me just try clicking, clicking, and clicking, and see what happens. Oh, all apps appears down at the bottom if I click around long enough. So I hit there, and now somehow I got a feeling they were thinking web TV with this one or internet TV or something like that where you use your remote control to surf the internet because we've got that so how do I go back to the main screen <laughs> ok 
Okay, okay, I don't want to look at this anymore. Oh, okay, so down in the corner you can hit start. Here's the problem. People that are scared to use computers are not going to be like going nuts with the mouse trying to find out what does what. They're just going to be like, help, somebody help me figure my computer out. Let's see if solitaire works. Oh, oh cool. So you get a nice little screen when it starts up. I suppose that's probably a... Uh, a step up from just having something pop up in the middle of the screen, ESRB.org. <laughs> we need the ESRB for ratings on solitaire. <laughs> oh yes, the Windows 3.1 time-wasting classic has made it into the Windows 8 beta. Sweet, and it's on Xbox Live. Uh, how did we play this again? Uh, yeah, you can tell I've never been much of a solitaire person. Oh, okay, so alternating colors and stuff like that. And oh, yeah, really good content, Jay, that you're putting on your darn page here. Ooh, you playing solitaire. That's totally worth watching. Okay, Queen, Jack, and uh, who cares? Let's do some more poking around in this thing. Okay, I've tried a couple rounds of solitaire and I've lost. Now, how in the world do we get out of this stuff? The, what, what, wait a minute, what's this? Oh, that's cute. So you can drag it around and stuff. Tech. Oh, yeah, okay, like that. So you just drag. Actually, I was kind of, uh, I was kind of pretending there because I'd seen um, on Techzilla and the folks just drag everything to the bottom and throw it away. You know, that's not very straightforward. I mean, somebody who learns how to use the computer can figure that out, but not somebody who doesn't give a darn about computers. Now, they're just going to be grumbling that once again they have to learn computers all over again because the nerds made them do so. Let's take another look at some more stuff on here. Anyways, it's an extra click to get to the desktop, so we just click this thing right here, and then here we are. And of course, that fish thing is the wallpaper. This would be the this is the desktop, and there's no start menu this time around, so you actually have to go down here, you know, and this appears, then click, and then you're back in the menus again. I don't know, just a little pokey, kind of pokey like that. I think that this they're trying at this point. I'd say that this is this OS is kind of leaning towards the jack of all trades thing. It's trying to be everything to everything and not really doing too well at anything. Let's see what we can do here. Can I at least get some icons back on here for a more Windows Classic type feel? Let's go personalize and uh, change desktop icons. Okay, let's put computer, files, network back on the desktop. Okay, so we can actually set that up and then click, can we click? Oh, okay, so we can click that and now we're back inside our more traditional user made. But I, I don't like all the eye candy. Uh, personalize. Is there anything resembling Windows Classic on here? It's Windows Basic, which is that, which is basically the theme we already had. Uh, let's see here. Is there any way to turn off? Because one thing I ran into was uh, air was you know the whole thing with Arrow was I didn't really have any use for any of the eye candy, so I figured turn it off and get some performance that way. So we got high contrast window color. Can we change? Nope, that's the colors. Uh, desktop background. This, uh, da, 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 that's just the background for the desktop. Huh? No Windows Classic, so you gotta have all this flashy crap. You can't just click like in the olden days. Not so sure. Not so sure about that. I mean, I don't need Windows 7 esque eye candy here. At least it lets you still double click and do all that other stuff. Really fancy stuff like here, and of course the plain Windows logo on top of that. C A T I sound fonts, the dump, etc., etc., etc. It still has all my files on here, but where'd all my programs go? You know, they were part of the image. Did none of them work in Windows in Windows 8? Let's see what we got here. Uh, Where's that thing where, yeah, and again, I have to click. Oh, well, there's a menu off to the side, too. Hey, come back. How do we get the menu back? Go back to here, and then, hello? Where's the, where'd the menu go? I just had it. Oh, pff, come on. Something on this side. Maybe I should just take the mouse for a round. Oh, you can just go to the upper left-hand corner to click back to the desktop. Oh, that that's nice. Uh, let's go down here, and then... Uh, 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 try dragging, try clicking, try gesturing. Where is that side menu? Oh, you... <laughs> now, I've been using computers since grade school, and I'm having trouble with the computer. Oh, wait, there it was. Oh, oh, that was his... Oh, so I just zoomed out on everything. How do I zoom back in? Uh, oh, okay, you just click it. Oh, there it is. There's the menu again. Oh, wait a minute. So, it doesn't activate when you go off to the side, but when you're down in the corner, oh, then it opens up. Not very straightforward at all, are we? What happens when we click Start on here? Oh, it just goes to the desktop? 
What? You, oh, well, at least this thingy opens up there, too. Device, what about settings? Is that the control panel? Oh yeah, control panel. Oh, and then that just brings open a window. What if you're inside the start screen, though? Uh, let's see, click. Oh, I zoomed everything again, whoops. This is gonna take a lot of getting used to, even for somebody like me who's been using computers for, the, for as long as I have. Settings, settings. Show administrative tools, etc., etc. Oh, oh, so that's just the start set. It's not the actual control panel. Ah, oh, I zoomed it again. This will take some getting used to, which for some people out there is going to make it a total hassle to use. Let's try start, and I'm back at the desktop. Let me see if I can figure out how to run Audacity, or at least one of my old programs on here. Ah, I see what happened to all my old programs. They're in the windows.old folder. So this thing not only uh, got rid of all my, got rid of my old windows, it also got rid of my old windows programs. So yeah, I'm gonna have to reinstall some stuff here. Something else that's different? Ribbons, there are ribbons for everything. Remember the ribbon from Office 07 and Office 2010? Looks like uh, Microsoft's trying to make that the uh, par for the course with uh, Windows 8 here. Okay, the web page, oh, download Google Chrome, okay. Set Google Chrome as my default browser, accept and install. Okay, let's see how Windows 8 handles a Chrome installation. You're awesome. Oh, do you want to run the Chrome setup? Yes, run. And, and, is my antivirus even working on here? Do I have any security software outside of, oh crap. <laughs> well, it looks like it's installing like it's supposed to. After this, yeah, let's check for antivirus and uh, antivirus and firewall. Get those installed on this thing again. Okay, at the, at the rate Microsoft's going with this kind of stuff, they should just stop calling this thing Windows and just call it Boxes. I had a little box open up after Google Chrome installed and it said, you now have multiple apps that can open web pages. So I clicked it and this is what I got, a box. How do you want to open web pages? <laughs> Microsoft Windows, huh? I guess we're gonna have to start calling it Microsoft Boxes. Google Chrome, of course. Okay, we've got that. Woo! -hoo, yay! At least I can sign in and synchronize uh, with my Google account to get all my web links back. Finally, something familiar, a Chrome download for Audacity. Once this finishes downloading, let's try installing Audacity on Windows 8 and see how it handles it. Okay, let's try running this. Okay, user account control, similar to Windows 7, so let's run this. So like, let's just close the window. Alright, and English. Audacity. Okay, this looks familiar. At least this works the same way it used to. Uh, create a desktop icon. <laughs> but I'm not using Windows. I'm using boxes. <laughs> it is creating desktop icons, though, but hopefully this will show up in the start screen. So you up that up and, ooh, yeah, Audacity. Let's uh, maximize that. The big thing I don't like is, you know, I'd like to have Windows Classic back in here at the very least. I don't need all this eye candy slowing my machine down. And I understand one of the big changes, error while opening sound device. Yeah, I don't think I have any sound devices on here. I gotta find something that'll run my, audit, my uh, XFi card on here. Ooh, yeah, here's another problem. What if that menu opens up and you're trying to click a close button? But I realize that all the eye candy ha uses a little bit of hardware acceleration, so I don't want that dropping my frame rates or anything. Let's go uh, see what else we can do here. Okay, back on the start screen. Besides Windows, what does Windows Explorer do? Is that really like. Oh, it is an Explorer window. Oh, well, that's nice. So let's go back to the start screen and Google Chrome, Audacity. Okay, so it does make little box thingies for anything that's not Metro or whatever it is compatible. So if it doesn't have one of these little tile thingies, it's got little boxes and stuff like that. Hey, that's cool. Maybe we should see what happens when we try to install Skyrim. Oh, actually, first though, we probably need video drivers and all that other fun stuff. So let's go back to Chrome and then install some stuff here.